Welcome to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian, and I'm streaming to you from beautiful Budapest, where summer is finally on the horizon. Hi, Maxim. Hi, Shivangi. Hi, ABCABC from Kurdistan, north of Iraq. Good to see many students here. Hi, Kyber. Hi, Sammy. Nice to see a member in the class already as well. Today, students, we are focusing on IELTS speaking part one of the speaking interview, discussing how to give clear, confident answers for those really high band nines. Uh, while we wait for a few more of your classmates, uh, this lesson is presented to you by aehelp.com for academic IELTS success. Visit us there. And for general IELTS, visit us at G-I-E-L-T-S help.com. I will show you those websites a little bit later on and also some free speaking practice opportunity. Hi, Rajveer. I saw one of our other members there asking uh, for your prayers. I guess they're sitting the exam shortly. All right, everyone. Uh, so if you have questions, you can always contact me at adrian at aehelp.com. You can also get our apps, Academic IELTS Help, link them to the web accounts, ahelp.com. If you like our app, please give us a good rating. People are very liberal to give bad ratings, but <laughs> hopefully some of you will give us good ratings. Uh, General IELTS Help uh, links to gieltshelp.com. All right, uh, the schedule for this week. So we're kicking uh, today off with speaking part one. This is the start to this week's live classes. Tomorrow, uh, we will have a reading class for members with new reading materials coming from our latest exams that we're developing. So exciting, exciting, some new reading passages. And then uh, that will be followed tomorrow also at this time by a task two. So we're going to start that tomorrow. And then later in the week, we will have of course, a finish for that task two, some speaking part two, uh, going into speaking part three uh, for the remainder for Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Uh, you can always find our schedule and lots of example essays uh, and uh, example uh, speaking scripts on our YouTube community board. So if you're on our YouTube channel and you click on community, then you will uh, see lots and lots of great uh, help and examples. I know many students use that, but I think some students don't know it exists. So um, uh, let me just write that up here real quick for you. It's a, again a free resource that you can use to get better scores. So YouTube channel, academic English help. And then uh, click on the tab that says community when you're on the channel page for free uh, task one and two and speaking scripts. Okay, I know students really like those and I'll be posting some more today as well. Okay, on the websites you'll find blogs as well. Okay everyone, so uh, let's get into today's speaking. Let's warm up our speaking so we always practice our speaking in these classes and although I can't hear you students and you can hear me, I would love to imagine all of your voices around the world as you are speaking and repeating uh, what I say, okay? All right, so make sure to speak and repeat. Speak and repeat. All right, uh, so you walk into your IELTS speaking interview. Uh, you go a little bit early, about an hour early, so that you can practice your English, take some scripts with you. Uh, stay confident and calm. You walk into the room where the examiner will be waiting for you, and the examiner will say, welcome to the speaking portion of the IELTS exam. Please take a seat. My name is Adrian. I will be your examiner. Uh, what is your full name? What is your full name? That'll be the first question that you'll be asked. Be confident, comfortable. Practice answering this in many different ways. Uh, so that your answers are reflexive. It's just coming off the cuff. It's reflexive, okay? Uh, Samuel Sadir says, my name is Samuel Sadir Vera. 
You can call me by my middle name, Samuel. Okay, so you use your middle name, Samuel. All right, cool. That works. Uh, Bisser uh, says, uh, my exam is tomorrow, Adrian. <laughs> All right, good luck on your exam, Bisser, tomorrow. Uh, Bisser says, my surname is uh, Demerziev, and my given name is Bisser, but uh, please call me by my nickname, Bibi. All right, Bibi, that works. Sure, absolutely. Say that nice and smooth and you're golden. Okay. Uh, Muhammad Izzat says, my first name is Muhammad and my surname is Omran. So you can call me uh, by my first name, Muhammad, please. Yeah, absolutely. That works. Uh, Jainil, use a regular font, not italic, because then uh, Google tends to hide the italic font and I have to click to see it. Okay, Janiel, so regular font. I'm not sure why it's hiding it. Maybe it is regular font. Anyway, Janiel. Uh, Janiel says, my full name is Janiel Jayan Tibai Gabani. Uh, please call me by my given name, Janiel. Okay, very good, Janiel. That works. All right, lots of good uh, answers to that question. And yes, absolutely, students, it's a good idea to give a nice, clear, complete answer. Uh, don't just say, I'm Rajveer Singh. Um, but, you know, say at least I'm Rajveer Singh, please call me by my first name Rajveer. So please say at least that much uh, so that you're showing your fluency uh, right away. Okay, Rajveer Singh says my full name is Rajveer Singh Daliwal. Please call, just call me Rajveer for short. Uh, Rajveer, that's not short. Raj would be short. Okay, so if you say something like uh, my full name is uh, Rajveer Singh. My family name is Singh, um, but you can uh, just refer to me as Raj, short for Rajveer. Okay, so that's kind of another uh, way. Uh, Raj would be short for Rajveer. I don't know if that's used in India, Rajveer. I'm just guessing. Okay. I'm just making that up. Um, AD, age, those are sometimes used for short for my name, for Adrian. Okay. Um, so this would be a, a short way. Okay. So short means it's short for your first name, like Tom for Thomas, Thomas or John for Jonathan. Okay. Would be short. All right, so repeat after me. What is your full name? My full name is Rajveer Singh. My family name is Singh, but you can just refer to me as Raj, short for Rajveer. All right, uh, Raj, uh, may I see your identification? Make sure to have your identification with you or it will be the last question of the interview before, uh, second to last question. The last question would be like, okay, please leave the exam room if you did not bring your ID. So make sure you bring your ID, the same one that you use to register. Bisser, remember your ID tomorrow that you use to register. Okay, so may I see your identification? Again, a nice, full, clear answer for this one as well, students. Okay, we're looking for nice, complete, Clear answers. Uh, Nazir says, here's my passport, which I used to register for this exam. Please have a look. Nazir, perfect, clear, complete. Uh, it shows confidence. Uh, when you say that, it also shows the examiner that you've prepared, you investigated, you made sure you know how the exam works, what is required of you. And that shows confidence. That's step by step closer to getting better band scores. Okay, Amanjot Kaur says, yes, sure, here's my identification that I used for registering for this exam. Amanjot, little grammar correction there in real time at 9 minutes 12 seconds. Check that out later on, okay? All right. Hassan Sadiq says, yeah, here's my passport. Please uh, take a look for clarification. Yeah, that's okay, Hassan. Sure, that works for clarification. Um, yeah, so I mean, it's a little bit, some examiners might take that a little bit weird, but I would be okay with it. <laughs> so, all right, uh, let's see. Zaid Nawafa says, yes, of course. Here's my passport that I used uh, for exam registration. Please have a look. 
Zaid, that works well. Sammy Rocky says, yes, of course. Let me dig out my passport from my pocket, which I used for registering for this exam. Here it is. Please have a look. Um, yeah, and that's a nice idiomatic expression there, uh, Sammy. So, yes, certainly uh, just give me a moment to dig my passport out of my pocket. Okay. Here it is. Uh, please take a look. Yeah, oftentimes, because passports are kind of big when you fit them in your pants, especially if you're wearing jeans, so you really do have to kind of dig them out of your pocket, and that's a nice idiomatic expression. Again, that's showing fluency, a higher level of English command of idiomatic language. Okay, let's go to the next one. So here the examiner will say thank you. They'll take a look at your passport. They'll stare at you. They'll look at the passport. Just double, triple check. Make sure you're not a doppelganger. It means not a phony, a stand-in. Um, that happens, believe it or not, in aisles sometimes where people will hire a look-alike or a doppelganger to sit at the exam instead of them. Um, so um, they'll make sure it's you, and then they'll give your passport back to you, and then they will say, okay, uh, I'm going to record this for marking purposes. The exam has three parts. I will give you instructions for each. Uh, for part one, just a couple more questions to get to know you better and some questions on a general topic. So they'll ask you a variety of different questions and several of them will likely focus on one topic. They might start with something simple like, what is your favorite color? Okay, so be ready for these. What is your favorite? Um, what is your favorite is a very typical question because it's um, one of those questions that people learn at the lowest kind of introductory level of English. So they'll start you off with something like that. Okay. Roshni Kunte says, oh gosh, my all-time favorite color is white. This is because white can mix with any color and also form new colors. Not only is this true, but it indicates uh, peace and tranquility. As well, I look beautiful in a white sari. <laughs> okay, Roshni, that works. Um, Roshni, I really like how you uh, explain why you like white and uh, also that um, you give a kind of or allude to the examples that you look great in a white sari. Okay, very good. Uh, Murasa Baraki says, good to see you in class, Murasa. So, Marasa says, let me just find you, Marasa. There you are. Um, for colors, green is my number one choice. Not only does it enhance my personality, but also gives me confidence. That's why today I'm wearing a green shirt um, so that I can answer smoothly. Nicely done, Marasa. Way to bring it into the present. Marasa is a longtime student of ours, and she knows the tricks of the trade. Answer example right explanation all of those elements very good all right bisser it says the most beautiful color in my eyes is red i love it because i'm a big fan of uh the ferrari team and formula one racing and their cars are red yeah ferrari red i believe bisser ferrari red is actually a color it's like a shade of red uh, that's officially a color <laughs> called Ferrari Red. Um, you can check up on that, but I believe it's a color. Uh, very good, Bister. Nice explanation. Nice use of uh, idiomatic language here uh, in my eyes. And it's actually a double um, kind of uh, literation because it's not only idiomatic language, but it's also a pun because red is in the eyes. So um, it, you can start with that as well. In my eyes. In my eyes, students, is an expression that means in my opinion. That's a nice one, Bister. Thanks for sharing that one today with us. So in my eyes, um, blue is the greatest color of all because it not only symbolizes life and prosperity, but it is also the color of my 
wife size and I just love staring into them. All right. In fact, today I'm wearing my lucky, of course, you should be wearing it if you're saying this, my lucky blue uh, shirt so that I get a great score on this test. All right. <laughs> okay. So I'm using eyes twice there just to emphasize this and have it sink in so you can remember it. Uh, again, speak and repeat. Uh, students, when you're doing your speaking practice at home and with your partners, and even if you're doing speaking practice by yourself in front of a mirror or you're recording on your phone and then listening back, which is really good practice, um, make sure that uh, you state questions as well as answers, okay? Too often students just focus on answers and they don't pay enough attention to the questions. They don't say them aloud. So that's really good. You want to do that, okay? So what is your favorite color? In my eyes, blue is the greatest color of all because it not only symbolizes life and prosperity, but it is also the color of my wife's eyes and I just love staring into them. In fact, today I'm wearing my lucky blue shirt so that I get a great score on this test, okay? Answer, explain, example, idiomatic language, and of course, as many of you know, uh, I'm also using uh, a correlative conjunction here, like some of you, uh, not only, uh, but also, right? Not only, but also. Uh, Bisser, make sure to try to get one, one or two of those correlative conjunctions, the not only, but also, either or, neither nor. Uh, try to plug a couple of those in. They will help your fluency. They force you to express yourself. Plus, they emphasize language. Those are definitely point makers in the IELTS, okay? All right. Um, so, uh, then the examiner may ask something like, how about your favorite food? Okay. Now, the examiner might speak quite quickly like I just did. It's not an ESL exam. It's an English proficiency exam, students. Uh, native speakers take the IELTS exam also. Okay. So how about your favorite food? All right. Uh, Raminder Singh says, basically, I'm fond of spicy food, but it's not really hard to eat dessert after a meal. Uh, and I love to eat dosa, which I ate last weekend. Okay, Raminder, um, too much. I don't really get what your favorite food is. Is it spicy food? Is it dessert? Is it dosa? Is it all of them? It's a little bit unclear here. So um, I need you to... Uh, Tell me in a clearer way exactly what is your favorite food. Uh, when uh, you hear this word favorite in the question, students, uh, make sure to really choose one item or one object, one favorite. So don't say things like, well, I like the color blue, but I also like pink. And for clothes, my favorite color is black. No, 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 no. Choose one, stick with it, explain it. You'll do much better, okay? So don't jump around, don't talk about a food category, talk about one food, okay? All right, let's see. Guru Preet Kaur says, my favorite food is Indian cuisine because the smell is so good, especially street food. Again, Guru Preet, it's not specific enough. Specific answers get better marks, okay? So, uh, Guru Preet, uh, what is your favorite street food? Okay, so tell me what that is, all right? If your favorite street food is chicken vindaloo, then say, my favorite food is chicken vindaloo, uh, especially if it's street food served by a street vendor, it's just made delicious, and explain that, okay? Be specific, all right? Anu Zahra says... My favorite food is rice. I like it, but I eat it moderately as I'm uh, very health conscious. 
uh, and I do a lot of fitness. And as you may know, um, rice is quite calorie heavy. All right, Anu, um, sure. Again, though, it's a little bit going off topic. So don't go off topic, students. Just answer, explain, example. Don't get too philosophical, okay? Keep it clear. Shahol, um, Manar, like many of our other Indians, my favorite food is bi uh, biryani. Biryani is made with rice, meat, and some spices. I like spicy food, and um, it smells fantastic. It smells of heaven. Mm, a little bit awkward, so. Um, but biryani is specific, and you're uh, doing a good job explaining what it is. Okay? So that works. All right? All right, Begjan says, Omrizak, the meal I like more than any other is called Besh Barmak, which is um, Kazakhstan traditional food, and the main ingredients are meat and dough. It's quite delicious. In fact, I had had it before I came to the city yesterday. Nice use of past perfect, Begjan. The examiner will pick that up. So when you're using complex language like past perfect, it's good. You want to try to plug those in there. The examiner will catch those. Uh, when you're talking about your country or your city, name it, okay? Kazakhstan, okay? Uzbekistan, Tashkent. So be specific with locations and places and names, okay? All right. Um... The dish I like more than any other is Hungarian goulash. Um, it's actually pronounced goulash, <laughs> for those of you who want to know. So the dish I like more than any other is Hungarian goulash, uh, which is a, a type of soup or stew depending on its consistency uh, that contains a variety of vegetables, um, red meat, potatoes, and of course, the famous Hungarian paprika. In fact, I had had this delicious cuisine just three days ago, and it gave me loads of energy to study up for this test. All right. So there you have it. Uh, giving you that band nine answer, sharing a little bit of the culture where I'm at right now. As I said at the beginning of the class, I'm streaming from Budapest in Hungary. Um, and uh, here we go. Repeat after me. How about your favorite food? The dish I like more than any other is Hungarian guyash which is a type of soup or stew, depending on its consistency, that contains a variety of vegetables, red meat, potatoes, and of course, the famous Hungarian paprika. In fact, I had had this delicious cuisine just three days ago, and it gave me loads of energy to study up for this test. Bada bing, bada boom. That's your band nine. Answer, explain, example, it's original. So here... The examiner knows that, okay, this isn't just something that I memorized, but I'm actually answering the question. That's really important, okay? And I'm giving a good explanation of what the dish is, okay? So even if your examiner looks like they know what it is, guillage is quite famous. Most people do know the basic ingredients. It's still a good idea to explain that because when you're saying vegetables, red meat, potatoes, and of course, the famous Hungarian paprika, you're picking up a lot of points for lexical resource, okay? The examiner's going, ah, lexical resource. This person can explain what is found in 
uh, a soup or in a guyash. Okay. All right. And then the examiner will say, uh, okay, uh, let's talk about your weekly activities, your weekly activities. And uh, students, we're going to talk about the weekly activities in just one moment. Uh, before I ask you these questions, I want to show you where you can practice your speaking with other students for free. So remember, um, at the beginning of the class, I said that we have our websites that have lots of materials. So this is the academic IELTS website here. And when you uh, join our website, you can uh, log into your My Student account at the top there. And then you have access to hundreds of uh, videos, uh, computer-based practice exams, uh, original tests, and you have a function here, you have editing and such as well, but you have a function here called student partner speaking, okay? And you click on that student partner speaking and then accept the agreement that you're gonna speak politely with other students and use it well, and then you'll find that there are always students uh, in this portal waiting for other students to talk to. So here's Rajveer Singh, here's Mert, here's Bisser, here's Sammy, I guess some of our students who are in the class watching. Here's N.A., here's Gokhrul, Vimal. Okay, so you go in here and you can do audio, video, and text. Uh, and of course, here's some instructions on how to do this, how to use this. And then you actually have some uh, questions as well. So you can click on these uh, to open up some IELTS speaking questions on different topics. Okay, I hope you can kind of see that. I know it's still a bit bright, uh, but you get the idea. So that's available both on the uh, academic IELTS uh, My Student portal, my uh, student account portal, and also on the general IELTS. So if you're in the general IELTS, studying for general IELTS at gieltshelp.com, same idea. You can click that big red button to join and then get into your my student account and you'll find that student partner speaking. And it's absolutely free. Okay, so that function in the website, you can use it 100% free. I just wanted to show all of you that before we continue. Okay. It's a good idea. You might want to do that, Bisser, uh, tomorrow when you walk into your exam. So if you don't find anybody at your exam center to practice your English with, uh, then uh, log in on your phone. And uh, hopefully there's somebody there waiting for you that you can practice with, okay? All right, everyone. Uh, so let's keep going with our questions here um, and uh, really get into some nice answers. Thank you for allowing me to share that with you and hopefully you will all use it. Okay. All right. Um, here we go. Students. So uh, let's talk about your weekly activities. How often do you go shopping in a week? Okay. Uh, Sammy says, I generally go shopping once a week, probably on the weekend. But now, due to the lockdown, I haven't gone shopping for the last three months. Wow, really, Sammy? You were able to stock up for three months? Impressive. Nicely done. Amanjot Kaur says, <clears throat> for the whole week, I'm busy in my studies. On weekends, I like to do shopping with my kith and kins. I buy my necessary items from the supermarket situated uh, near my city. Okay, Amanjot, not bad. Be specific. Don't use the word things. Necessary items, merchandise, goods. Okay, lots of better nouns than the word things. Students, always correct the word things when you're practicing your speaking and writing. Always find that better noun. There's always a better noun than things. All right. Alex Joseph says, I enjoy shopping um, several times in a week, although I find it's uh, not interesting. Um, it's not as interesting as my wife likes to do the grocery shopping and shopping for clothes. The last time uh, we both went shopping was just before the lockdown uh, in the month of uh, March. Okay. All right. 
Not bad. Zahab Metra says, to be honest, shopping is one of my hobbies. And most of the time I'm inclined to do this. So I frequently go shopping twice a week, especially every Sunday or Saturday. Okay, good, Zahab. Uh, what did you buy? Where did you go? Give me some details. I'll give you more points. Okay. All right. Tasmia Faruqi says, well, I shop frequently. I love shopping since I feel it's one of the best stress um, releases, stress relief, and uh, it helps to elevate my mood. I think that's where uh, oftentimes, not always, of course, but oftentimes women and men tend to vary. Men find shopping stressful. Women find it relaxing. That's an interesting gender difference most of the time. Uh, Hadi Watar says, the closest shopping mall is quite far from me. It's about 30 miles, so I don't go shopping a lot, maybe once or twice every week to get all the necessities like food, but I rarely buy clothes. Okay, Hattie, that's nice. Some good quantitative language in there. Hassan Sadiq says, um, frequently I go shopping uh, in the week, but now due to the COVID-19, I have to shop for a longer period and avoid going out regularly. So I shop uh, maybe once every two weeks. Hmm, okay, Hassan. A couple of corrections. Don't switch to we. Okay, students, um, for uh, part one, you realize that the focus is always you. So keep your sentences, I, me, my. Uh, don't switch into people and we and us and you. Uh, keep it I, me, my. The question is asking about you, your weekly activities. The pronoun here matters. Okay, the pronoun should stay I, me, my, myself, okay? Uh, you will have better communication and you will get better band scores, guarantee you, okay? Chabi, satisfying time, says, usually I do my weekly shopping once on Sundays uh, due to my hectic schedule, which forces me to um, prep my meal for the next four days in order to be more productive at my job uh, so I don't have to think about food and shopping, Good, Chabi. Good answer. A couple of corrections. Make sure to note those. Okay. Georgi Mami Shashivili says, Actually, I'm not a big fan of shopping. Uh, mainly, I use online delivery, but there are some events like buying gifts. So I would say once in a month. Last month, I bought a watch for my friend at the local mall. Hmm. Okay, Georgi. So you've switched over to virtual shops, kind of like me, honestly. I try not to go into physical stores these days too much, not just because of the COVID, but because I find online shopping has better prices and it comes to my door often. Not always, not always, um, but oftentimes. Yasmin Afifa says, although I spend uh, my week uh, teaching, in order to refresh my mind, um, I do shopping on Friday and eat my favorite food at a restaurant. Okay, yes, mean clarity. Clarity, yes, mean you're mixing food and eating with shopping and what you do in the week uh, gets confusing for your listener. So focus, answer the question. Paul Laris says, I seldom go shopping maybe once per month. I find it quite exasperating, especially when I go with girls because they want to try everything on uh, despite the unaffordable price and I'm standing around twiddling my thumbs uh, staring at way too many bright lights and colors right Paul I agree uh, it happens to me sometimes too um, but that's the way it is uh, and I have to love it because I have a little girl and I'm sure she's going to be more and more into it as she gets older um, so how often do you go shopping in a week start with uh, qualitative so I seldom go out uh, for shopping to stores during the week. And then switch to quantitative, okay? Uh, perhaps, perhaps uh, just <clears throat> once or twice to get groceries or on rarer occasions to buy a gift for someone. Uh, just 
last Thursday, I went to a local uh, jewelry shop to get a pair of earrings for my daughter's fourth birthday. Okay. So uh, that's my answer here. Uh, what I want to emphasize, uh, students, is uh, the importance of qualitative and quantitative language. A qualitative language is language that's subjective that we don't measure, uh, like fast, beautiful, seldom, okay? Uh, we can't really measure that. That's up to your opinion and your subjective view. Now, uh, the opposite, or not the opposite, but the um, complementary language to that is what's called quantitative language. Quantitative language is measurable language, like five times a week, twice on Thursdays and Saturdays. Uh, that's quantitative language. Now, quantitative language is much more objective, and it clarifies qualitative language. So, in good communication, we mix qualitative language with quantitative language. And for high band scores, you should do that throughout your speaking interview. So Bisser, uh, my good uh, man, when you are in your uh, speaking interview tomorrow for the IELTS exam, make sure to focus on that as well. Qualitative and quantitative language. Okay. All right. So uh, again, repeat after me, students. How often do you, you go shopping in a week? I seldom go out for shopping to stores during the week, perhaps just once or twice to get groceries or on rare occasions to buy a gift for someone. Just last Thursday, I went to a local jewelry shop to get a pair of uh, earrings for my daughter, uh, for my daughter's fourth birthday. Okay, so that's what you got to do. All right. Now, explanations are good, too. So definitely throw an explanation in there. Um, if you forget it in one answer, make sure to put it in the next one. So you might do something like, uh, I'm not a big fan of shopping. Uh, it usually stresses me out. Okay, that's a bit of idiomatic language there as well. All right, uh, next question. Where do you go to work or school? Hmm, there's a good one could easily be asked that question on your next IELTS exam. So where do you go to work or school? Where do you go to work or school? Give me a nice, a full sentence answer for that one. Hadi Watar says, <clears throat> right now I'm staying at home due to the COVID, but before this uh, epidemic, I used to go to the Dutch language school to improve uh, my uh, Dutch, uh, especially because I'm new to the country and I want to resume my studies. Very good, Hadi. Okay. Uh, and where is your Dutch language school? It's uh, five blocks from your house. It's downtown. Uh, give me location. Give me specifics. So where do you go? It's not just the name of a place, student. So again, think quantifiably, right? So it's not just the name, but it's the actual location. So where is it located? All right. Uh, Zahab says, about three months ago, I completed my uh, grade 12 and due to the lockdown in India, the date of reopening universities is after the summer holiday now and it's suspended. So I don't think I will pursue university in September 2020. Hmm. Zahab, Metra, um, that's off topic. You're, you haven't told me anything. Uh, you're expressing your own thoughts, but students, uh, really careful here. I want to emphasize this, okay? On IELTS, okay, so this is just a really important tip. This is a what not to do. So I gave you a lot of tips on what you should do. Now, here's a tip on what not to do that many students uh, tend to do, okay? So uh, be original, but... Do not go into expressing your own off-topic thoughts and emotions. You will not get a good score. Uh, 
if you do this, all right? Um, many high-level uh, students and candidates uh, lose at least one, sometimes two, even more band scores primarily for this one big reason is they're not answering the question. They're talking about their emotional state and their feeling and their current condition because of the COVID, but they're not answering the question, okay? So uh, if you're not going anywhere for work and school right now because um, you're uh, at home due to lockdown, then say that. Then say, currently I'm not going anywhere for work and school. I am in fact just staying at home and uh, I do my studies at home and I do my work from my computer over the internet. So I guess I should say that my home address currently is my work and school, which is located at uh, 375 um, Red Street, New York. Okay, so that's a much better answer. All right, so stay on topic. Answer the question that you are asked. All right, very important. All right, let's see if somebody has done that. Okay. So Rajveer Singh says, I went to St. Xavier's school, just a kilometer walk to my house, and sometimes my father used to drop me off by Mike. Interestingly, I had a lot of fun at my school while studying, and I must say I was one of the brightest students through my entire life in school. Whew, Rajveer, you're going off topic. I didn't ask about how you're doing in school. Just where is your school? Where is St. Xavier's? It's a kilometer walk from your house. Where? Okay, where? Students, practice these Answers to where questions, okay? Where is a location, okay? Uh, Paul says, I'm currently taking a year off to gain some knowledge of English, although I'm planning to take up a course to become a dental hygienist. The English Academy is located a few blocks uh, from my home at something, something, okay? Street, something address. Just make it up or make up... Um, a semi-precise location, like in the downtown core of, okay? All right. Yasmin Afifa says, well, before the lockdown, either my school in the morning and my university in the evening is where I went, which is located nearby my place. It's a boarding school. Now I'm finished my studies and I'm continuing uh, soon. Okay, kind of. Still not the ideal answer. Um, just think about it. So as I'm reading your answer, students, um, uh, if uh, another person says this to you, so listen to each other's answers, how clear are you of where this person is studying or working? Like how clear are you? Can you find that place? Can you imagine it in your head where it is? If you can't, then the answer is not accurate enough, okay? So you always want to state answers that the listener, the audience can imagine, okay? So Abhishek says, well, it's 20 kilometers away from my apartment office. I take an hour to get there um, because of traffic. It's, secondly, it's downtown. And lastly, I have to cross at least uh, 10 traffic signals. Due to the COVID, I'm not going anywhere these days and I'm uh, taking the option to work from home. Okay, Abhishek, that's one of the best answers so far. Okay, all right. So Sarav Deep says, well, as I'm a student and I'm currently going to St. Francis Convent School, it's about four kilometers from my home. Uh, I love going to my school and grasping knowledge there. Um, I miss it only once in a blue moon. Okay, all right. Um, so, um, currently I'm doing all of my studies and work from my flat, which is located in the 13th district of Budapest, uh, but before the lockdown, I used to go uh, five days a week to my downtown office located in the fifth uh, district on the famous 
Vatsi uh, Street. Okay, so that would be the type of answer that gets you good band scores for where, where is it? Okay, identify it, use identifiers like district, province, city, street, uh, landmarks, rivers, lakes, so on, specific names, okay? So repeat after me, uh, where do you go to work or school? Currently, I'm doing all of my studies and work from my flat, which is located in the 13th district of Budapest. Be but before the lockdown, I used to go five days a week to my downtown office located in the 5th district on the famous Vatsi Street, all right? That will get you your good band scores. Okay, uh, next question. Next question, students. Uh, when do you usually wake up during weekdays? <laughs> okay, give me a nice full sentence answer for this one. So this is a when type of question, okay? Notice how in the aisles they usually go through the what, when, where, why in part one. So these kinds of W questions or comparatives. So when do you usually wake up during weekdays? Marios GR says, I usually wake up at 6 a.m. Since I had been a romantic person, I like to uh, sit on my balcony, have a cup of coffee, and enjoy the sunrise. This gives me energy uh, to go to work and deal with difficult situations. Marios, very nice, very visual, good quantitative language, 6 a.m. Okay. Um, Marios, I would just say since I'm a romantic at heart, I like to sit on my balcony. Since I'm a romantic at heart, I like to sit on my balcony. Okay, um, Bisser says, <laughs> uh, I'm a night owl uh, on Fridays and Saturdays. Uh, I go out with friends and we spend the whole night together. So I wake up around 12 o'clock or even later. Yeah, Bisser, it's not night bird. Careful, students. The expression changes here. So... Just a little vocabulary here. See, Bister, that would be a mistake on the exam. So if you wake up early in the morning, then you're called an early bird. Okay. There's even an idiomatic expression which uh, is said as early birds or early bird catches the worm. It means people who wake up early are successful. Okay. So if you say, I'm an early bird, it means that you wake up early. But if you like to party, if you like to stay out, socialize, okay, then the correct expression is, I'm a uh, night, night owl, okay? Uh, everybody knows the owl. Owl is uh, that specific kind of bird that's nocturnal. Nocturnal means that it's uh, active during the nighttime, hunting for mice and other such creatures. Uh, the owl goes, hoo -hoo, hoo -hoo, hoo -hoo, right, in the night. Hoo -hoo. They can spin their head around. They got the nice big round eyes and so on. That's a <laughs> night owl. Okay, so I'm a night owl. That's the correct expression. All right. Let's take a few more. Lazy man says, I often wake up at 7 a.m. so I can eat breakfast and go to school, but to be honest, I'm considered a night owl. So I waste a lot of hours playing games and waking up late at 10 a.m. Mm, and your YouTube name is Lazy Man, so you're not lying. You're an honest man as well. You could say I'm a lazy, honest man as your handle. Ha ha, little joke. Uh, Alex Joseph says, on the weekends, I wake up late at 9 o'clock because I'm lazy. Um, not only uh, do long sleeps give me a great rest, but also they boost my energy. Saturdays and Sundays are not my early bird days. Nice. Yeah, early bird, one word, right, Alex? Thanks for sharing that. Beautiful. All right. Sam Katrona, our member, good to see you in the class uh, sam says on weekdays my schedule is very tight i have to be at work i usually wake up at 5 a.m in the morning and do exercise after that i have my breakfast and go to the office for 8 30 a.m Ooh, very good sam you are definitely an early bird during the weekdays all right um you could use both if you really want to get fancy you could say well uh during the weekdays I'm an early bird, 
and wake up. Now it is two words, early bird. And wake up at 5 a.m., go for a run, and then get to my office for 7.30. However, on weekends, I wake up late because I'm a night owl on Saturdays and Sundays, and I stay out uh, with friends often past midnight. All right, nicely done. Uh, so, again, a little bit of vocabulary here. Repeat after me. When do you usually wake up during the weekdays? Um, well, during the weekdays, I'm an early bird and wake up at 5 a.m., go for a run, and then get to my office for 7.30. However, on weekends, I wake up late because I'm a night owl. On Saturdays and Sundays, I stay out with my friends often past midnight. Now, the question's not asking me for this part, so it's really important that I start with this, and it's also important that I don't keep going with this and go off topic. That's not good. You always want to stay with the question. Okay, weekdays, weekdays. So um, I like to be productive during my weekdays. All right, and then here we have four more questions for you to try on your own, or you can try these questions with another student on the websites in that student uh, partner speaking that I just showed you. So who are people that you see every day? Who are people you only see once or twice a week? Uh, have your weekly activities changed much compared to five years ago? Present perfect. And if you could change one part of your weekly routine, what would it be? That's a conditional. Okay, so try those questions. Again, uh, try them on the websites, gltshelp.com for general outs. Click that button in the My Student account to, uh, you'll have to sign up, either the premium or the free course. And then uh, in the My Student account, the student partner speaking. For the academic IELTS, it's aehelp.com. And of course, uh, the website will look like this uh, when you log on and you can click that big red button to join or the green one to try it for free. Uh, fantastic work today, students. Uh, tomorrow, exciting times, members, new reading passage from our exams that are still in development. Exciting, exciting. And uh, also, we will start a task two with everybody. So task two writing practice tomorrow. Make sure to join us for that. Check out our websites. Check out our apps. Keep up the good work. Be confident. Believe in yourselves. Don't be shy. You're very, very welcome, Pooja. Nice to see you in the class. Welcome, Nazir, all of our members, and welcome all of our students. Arifa, uh, have a fantastic rest of your day. Stay healthy. Stay strong. Get vitamin D in you. And hopefully I will see all of you tomorrow. Much love to all of you. I'm Adrian, signing out from Budapest. Bye for now.